Here's a little song I wrote about our oh, good. upcoming guest. Okay. Paul Giamone. Paul Giamone. Can you guess who our guest is? Is that it? Oh, uh, it's Paul Giamatti. Is you it? are yeah. a winner, my friend. I was wondering where you were going with that. You didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> well, these are called micro songs. They're like my micro impressions. They're songs, but they're just micro songs because I don't want to hog the spotlight from our incredible guest, Paul Giamatti. What I love hanging out very with Very cool guy. dude. Kind of guy you would hang out with, uh, have some pizza with in New York. Super. Uh, it was very fun to talk to. We um, get into paranormal. Oh, yeah. He's into the paranormal. He has a podcast coming out about it. And he mm -hmm. really gets in that. And I like that because everyone has had some experience with something weird, something that they want to tell you about. Yeah. He had a lot of good stories about that. He's been in a lot of, uh, obviously, the big movie. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, did the someone big say, movies, <laughs> the big movies. I mean, yeah, no, you got on. It's great. You got on. Um, and he's been in. Uh, oh, he was in Twelve Years a Slave, the uh, feel bad movie this summer. Uh, he was. He's on Billions. Um, Thanks for doing all the talking. Sideways was the major one. Um, Adams. Yeah. Did you mention Adams? The, oh, John the, Adams. Johnny we, Adams. We learned a lot about JJ Adams because. <laughs> Adams, we were laughing that you can't really tell if he's doing a good or impression or a bad impression because it's so long ago. But I'm Paul Giamatti. He's very, oh, that's pretty good. I'm Paul Giamatti. He was so nice and he's had such an amazing career. He does comedy and he does drama, mm -hmm. both perfect and really fun to talk to. I would listen to this one. Don't, yeah. don't press don't, the pause don't button. Don't touch that dial. Don't go over to some other podcast. Just listen and enjoy these 40 commercials. Paul Giamatti. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> That's all I got. I know, it was a good one. Well, I, I think you've done very well. I mean, <laughs> thanks. There's quotes on lot. I mean, there's fans. I mean, you you're like a you're a thing. You're a thing. You're like okay. You had, you had Billy Bob Thornton on. That's another guy who's a thing. Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, well, he's yeah, he's like a serious funny guy. He's like yeah, yeah. he's he's amazing. He, he's wait, you had him on what? Oh, on Billions? No, I had him on. The, I've been doing this uh, podcast. Whoa, whoa, for like whoa, two months. Whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa. I know. Two months. What the fuck? Yep. He's a newbie. Yep. Paul, yep. did you have to? Do you have to take any special classes? To any do courses podcast? or anything? Yeah. No, I didn't. Okay. I found that I didn't need to. Okay. I'm learning on the job. Okay, that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, we haven't that's... learned one thing this whole time, and it's been a year and a half. <laughs> it's been a year and a half. Yeah. yeah. It. Yeah, I think if you're uh, if you're curious, just curious about anything, that's a good place yeah. to be in. Because uh, you're, I'm curious about you. <laughs> well, no, that's it. No, and I think I think the thing is that I, I was like, well, I'll, I'll talk about all this shit that I never talk about, like UFOs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. That's super interesting to me. I can mm -hmm. endlessly talk about that stuff, Bigfoot and stuff like that, like just endlessly. So, you know, I it's, love it's a, that stuff. Good, and I, I think too. that's a good area because yeah. I like, first of all, that you're veering a little bit away from Saturday Night Live, which helps us. <laughs> yeah. And. Um, yeah, Bigfoot hosted in 2011. Did he really? Um, that was John John Mulaney, who's a size 14. So that was oh. why they called him Bigfoot. But let's go back to Sasquatch. You know, and a Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah Bigfoot's... let's talk about this stuff, Dana. Absolutely, because I think I'm it's happy to talk riveting. about. It. Let's spend a little time on it. Here's my. I'm happy to talk about Saturday Night Live. I don't know that I have oh, as much interesting we... stuff to say, but no, I... your episode is great, and we'll we'll save that. That's a teaser. Oh, okay. okay, I went okay. over it. It's it's was received incredibly well, and you were very was very it? funny in it. God, I... Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh right. yeah. Good. It's, good it's a great episode. Good to hear from you guys. Good. From Actually, us, Dana, yes. I want to jump in and say, in your monologue, you were like shot out of a cannon. You were sort of like, you're ready to go. Is it a little nervous was, or was, what? What? Or, I think I was. I think I was nervous. I think I was also, if I remember right, I was really sick. So I was. Oh. I was sick as a dog. So I think I was overcompensating. Wow. I think I was like. I was like. I got to get myself really ramped up because I. I was really unwell. What I had a, a terrible bad time to be sick. Terrible. The terrible. only incredible thing about being sick, and David, I'm talking about in terms of stand up or whatever, your nerves go away because you're like, I don't think I can even fucking do this. 
but I guess yeah. I'm going to do it. I'll just do yeah. it, but I, I'll, yeah. no way I'll be any good. Yeah. But you could, no, I actually yeah. like being sick in some things or really tired too, because yes. then I don't over fucking do it. I overdid it there, but I don't normally overdo it. <laughs> You know, but I do think I was extra. I mean, I, I normally overdo it. And if I'm sick or tired, it'll cut back on my my overdoing. But that monologue, in fairness, for anyone I've hosted twice, Dana's hosted, even if you've been there and you see it and you go, I wouldn't get nervous. You you hear that music in the back and you're like, fuck, is this really it? And then yeah. you, you start to shake a little. It's just yeah. too much. It's like, no, I was so very nervous doing the whole thing. I was so nervous. I didn't really <laughs> want to do it at first. I was like, I don't want to do this. They came and offered it to me. And I was like, fuck, no, I don't want to do that. That yeah. would be too, I would fuck that up. That would be terrible. I would screw that up. I don't want to do that. But you do get scale. I think yes, that's what do. I got. <laughs> yes, so, yeah. Uh, well, you also, um, I think I'm sorry to harp on this, but it was interesting that uh, it was a blizzard that weekend. Yeah. And I think from your monologue, I could, gather that it was going to be hard to get an audience you don't even know if you're doing the show i think that's true as i remember yeah it was a gigantic blizzard it was a huge one you were thanking the crowd for even coming in you yes. said we didn't know if we'd have a crowd we yes. didn't know if and that's just one more layer of making you sick shut the, yeah shut the whole thing shut the whole city down and i think yeah. it was the first time they'd ever had the party afterwards not at a they had it in that studio Oh, a little mixer. A little wow. mixer. It was a little, it was very much like a little I've mixer. I've never heard of it there. Yeah. It yeah, would be it so very, convenient. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just yeah, break was, open the, whatever you're drinking right there on the ice. It was a little ice. sad. Yeah. It was a little sad. And kind <laughs> yeah. Of, you know, there was Usually some sort it's of, yeah. spectacular. Well, since we're on the topic, <laughs> Paul the Rocker, I mean, you got, once you locked into these characters, you're really, really funny. The British guy doing the gibberish. <laughs> Uh, sure. The Lundford twins with Fred Armisen, who I uh, <laughs> he doesn't even remember. That was really that I remember being the most fun. I liked that a lot. I thought that was really funny. And they did all the sets really well and the costumes and uh, the other people were so great. So exactly like the people on those kind of hee haw type things. And, and Fred Armisen great. was with you and he's great. always he was hysterical. Great. But yeah, yeah, that's the magic of it is that it's just picking the show by Wednesday and then these beautiful sets and beautiful costumes and yeah. you never think it's going to work. And then. The air show, it's like, hey, we're actually, we're doing, I guess, what we no, do. I, yeah, I can remember <laughs> them saying, like, they were like, what do you think this guy's hair would be like? And I said, sort of like James Caan, the kind of like James <laughs> Caan 70s perm that he had. Yeah. And they, then in two seconds, they had that wig it's made. Great. And it was just amazing. Well, they really didn't have funny. it made. I, I wore the James Caan <laughs> big wig <laughs> in, 91, <laughs> in 91. In 91. And I wrote on the bottom, I said, save it for future hosts. There but anyway, you look great in it. No, they do Sometimes, that like that. You, Dana, you ever try on the pants and it says former cast member, you know, really? they'll say someone from 10, 15, 20 years ago. Because <laughs> yeah. Farley used to wear, once he found Belushi ones, he would put them on under his own pants really? during the show. And I go, you're, that's like a crazy person thing. To like do. his lucky, his lucky yeah, pants. Lucky, yeah. But yeah. I can't, I go, how do you move in Two pairs of pants. Two pairs of pants. Didn't bother him. Didn't bother him. And he moved amazingly mm -hmm. in two pairs of pants. Well, they have, a, they have a big bulletin board in the wardrobe area, and they list your name, and then they list your sizes, <laughs> you know, waist size and, sure. and length. And I was the only one who had reverse sizing. So Lovitz and I have this funny long-term thing of reverse sizing, because at that, those days, I was very slender. So my waist- So you were very slender, and your legs are incredibly <laughs> short. No, my legs- Well, I, they had me at 32, but I, I don't like short Oh, pants. super long legs. I'm sorry. I see what you're No, saying. not super right. long, but I, was, I had a <laughs> small waist. Scene. Dennis yeah, Miller used to say, fucking uh, Rob Schneider's from- his, Top, the bottom of his nuts to the top of his boots is 11 inches. <laughs> Jesus, that sounds so mean. <laughs> By yeah, the way, just shy he, of a foot between the uh, the knee bone to the hip bone. Okay, Femur <laughs> to anklet. Uh, you know, That's Giamatti Schneider. looks a little like Schneider, which I think you said Giamatti, no, right? Somebody said, or somebody you said, said on some talk me. show. Do I look, look like him? Do I look no. more like him? Am I aging more into looking like him? Because I never no. thought I looked like him, but I was mistaken for him. There was a period of time really? where I was constantly mistaken for him. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know what started it, and I don't know what ended it. But there was a definite like <laughs> you went into it and you faded out yeah. of it. It's a weird uh, gap that where where everybody was convinced I was Rob. Schneider. It's not in totem, but maybe a little bit about the upper lip and the nostrils. 
He has kind of an elvis mm. thing going on there. He played Elvis in Japan. We talked about that. There might be oh. something right in there. I thought it was the eyes more, too, or mm. something. Mm. Kind of the big, Well, eyes. if you... Listen, let's just say this Come probably will never happen. There's a Grown Ups 3. We have a Schneider contract situation. We call <laughs> Paul. All I need is 10 minutes in the trailer with you. Can you say, okay. maze, maze? You could sound maze, like him. Maze. I don't look like there Paul Giamatti. <laughs> Quit saying it. Oh, I'm gonna, he's got they're hair, both offended he's got he's got <laughs> hair no i wasn't offended i just couldn't figure it out i was like that's so weird if you put us together there's no way you would think we it was i was having dinner with him once a guy came up paul giamatti and he really just went, now, he that's went, the thing i always wonder is does it said, happen no, the other way no i'm not paul giamatti fuck you hey fuck you <laughs> so, I try, Rob, if you're listening, another, we're joking. There, this, you know, so there's another little window where I got mistaken for Larry the Cable Guy, which I actually can see more <laughs> than the other thing. That's ninety percent hat, though. A, a, at least three people thought I was. Larry I the love cable that guy. one. Well, that's a that's good one. That's okay. Yeah. Do you mind lowering your voice for a second and, and saying "Get her done"? Get her done. Okay. Get her done. <laughs> It's not bad. Well, it but, is the guy. The th but I did wonder if people, there was no mistaking him for me, though. That that would right. never happen. Why is that a one-way street? But I if don't you know. have that hat, he wore a hat, right, Dana? Yeah. I, I, like Dana, you are I don't have a face or a voice. Like, I'm a completely neutral person. So I'm able to, mm -hmm. if I put a hat on and just <laughs> do it, I can walk amongst you just look the, like a. I don't. Really? I'm in. A, I don't have any. You could put a nose on. I, I'm perfect to add a voice or a thing. It's a blank canvas. People, Spade but I. Yeah. People don't recognize you. People don't immediately. Your voice. No, nothing. It's frustrating. You, you, nothing. What they do is they squint painfully. Mm -hmm. Like, why do I know that guy? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I love being anonymous. I, I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm not. An, I'm an introverted extrovert. But David and yeah. I used to be mistaken for each other yeah. a lot. I could see that. You know, I could sort of see that. I could same sort of tribe. See that. He's got the little beard now, and we That's both good. went to differentiate back. you guys. That's a good idea. I had bangs till I was 55. <laughs> 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 and then I said, my wife <laughs> said, "Hey, boy, like the the Dutch boy here." Yeah. <laughs> my wife said, "You know, tired of having sex with Howdy Doody here." Okay. <laughs> Let's come it back and do something. Although, how do you do a little it? brill cream? Both of you guys have a good heads of hair. It's nice to see. I like I, we to have, see there's that. a lot of product. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Good. If, Why if not? I, if I came out of a can... pool, yeah. you would you would comment to somebody. You would Jeez. throw up. Jesus <laughs> Christ! The way, there's an island uh, out there. That peninsula is shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in a dentist mood today. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. I'm punchy already, which is, is a that good... a thing you go to normally, or is that just is that you're in? I we all well, I love doing Dennis Miller. I think mm. he's brilliant. I mean, his mm -hmm. the way he'll filter language. Like, give me a subject, anything, uh, or uh, an idea, anything. Uh, uh, to having having a having a, an ice cream sundae for for lunch. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's that's a good dietary choice. Okay, <laughs> give me the seven thousand calorie split. All right, I'll put that in my orifice and hold my <laughs> stomach for two hours, cramping. So that's a good way to spend a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. So I got I got a freezer burn in my perineum. You, you never <laughs> exactly. Said, exactly. Yeah. David is a uh, heir apparent to Dennis. When, yeah. uh -huh. doing this podcast his throwaway wit and and references mm -hmm. so they're they're twinsies but anyway paul what we love yes, about sir. you yes <laughs> <laughs> paul hasn't even talked yet no, paul, this is fantastic we're getting let's, you paul. let's do we're a little bit super because i want to i just That's i good. just want to tell people it's also on youtube and you can listen to it ching yeah because there's shit animation wag. with it yeah it's yeah. called ching oh. wag. And, and there's animation with it we wanted to do the whole thing animated but that that was too expensive right that's just to point out people that they're talking about supernatural stuff and and waking yeah. dream states and then you when you see it on youtube you're seeing animation animation as some the of the stories animated. going i thought yeah. that was really cool yeah, the animation's great, and and that yeah. was really that was the idea, and maybe someday we can do the whole. Paul, thing are you that. allowed to show clips, or are you not allowed? I I, I don't. You know, no, they, an excellent they they question show the whole they, thing. I don't know if they've harvested clips of your show and put them all around Instagram. They do. And they put clips up okay. on the social media and stuff okay. like that. So, the, but if you say someone in Washington, there's a new possible Bigfoot. Can you show 10 seconds of that, or is that a legal Oh, question? of like, of, of a person who filmed a Bigfoot yeah. in Washington? Yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. We haven't gone to that I territory. I think you I, can on social media, but YouTube might be a different story. Interesting. We haven't, 
We've been wanting to do stuff like that because actually I keep talking to people who have crazy stories and I want to record them and put that on and, yeah. you know, which that would be fine. But but showing like the Chupacabra, somebody filmed the Chupacabra in like, you know, Arizona. I don't know if we could do Wait, that. Wait, sorry, I'm a neophyte. Chupacabra? The, the Chupacabra is getting around. It's the Chupacabra. Is, it, is it a serpent? Is it- it's like a it's like a crazy little uh, uh, coyote ish. Yeah, coyote oh. crazy thing that kills uh, cattle and goats, and it's a blood sucker. It like drains the blood out of goats and cows. And it's stuff. sort like, of a Mexican. It started yeah. like in Mexico, and it's like a, a, a lore that they say it's out there. Then yeah. it's, now it's, it's all over worldwide. Like, it's all I, over. I, I saw it. You've seen I, it. You did. I saw something demonic. So I'm at a, a ranchy <laughs> farm place, right? We have sure. a koi pond because it came with the house. But <laughs> anyway, at the ranchy pond, at the ranchy yeah. place, there's a koi, the pond. Ra- a koi pond. So I see a thing bigger than a cat, smaller than a dog, creeping right. in slow motion to the Ooh. koi pond. Right. And I'm just looking at it. So I sort of knock. It looks at me. It looks really chewed up. And yeah. it had a demonic face. Yeah. Just like yeah. intensely scary. I was told it's just a chewed up bobcat. So then I just banged the window and ran away. And ran away. I think that I think the chupacabra has horns. I can't remember. Oh, I, I didn't I, have I horns. Yeah. I don't think. Mm. I think the chupacabra. You know, has Paul. Horns. Paul might appreciate I'm the sorry. story. Dana, you can tune out. But when in in Grown Ups too. Oh my God! A couple of people remember. That's, it? that's our you. third yeah, reference awesome. to. Uh, I, know, I know. I know. I it's didn't just, expect it to come up this much. What was it, the box office uh, gross domestically? Dana. Two one sixty five. One hundred sixty five million. That's, I think it was yeah. exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so pre-pandemic. we have a scene where the grandma <laughs> has a big beat up, chewed up toe. And she goes, my toe hurts, my toe hurts. And, 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 and one of the big, I don't want to give the whole movie away, but yeah. she takes her sock off and it's so big, swollen and disgusting, like obviously cartoony that we all react. And then they go to, you know, I think Chris Rock says, oh, Kobe Bryant lives or whatever, you know, whatever. So no, Toby Bryant, whatever. So <laughs> Toby we, Bryant. we Toby do a Bryant. couple, everyone, you know, you cut around, you go spade, here's mm-hmm. three for you. We do that. So we mm-hmm. get to Salma Hayek and she goes, what should I say? And I go, just stare and go chupacabra. Awesome. <laughs> and, uh, and she did it. And then no one laughed and she looked at me and I go, I think it's funny. I think that someone funny. will get it. I think it's that's great. A big, oh, weird that's great. Yeah. That's great. It didn't make it, huh? It didn't make even a rough ah, cut. Paul. So, Damn. Paul, about chin that's wag, awesome. chin yeah. wag. <laughs> yeah, what, chin what, wag. What is the stuff that floats you about as far as supernatural? Is it uh, people oh. seeing ghosts, uh, aliens? Yeah, ghosts are interesting. Aliens. It. I was super into for a long time uh, alien abduction stuff, which yeah. kind of doesn't really, I don't think it happens so much anymore, which is weird that it was, again, there was like a window of time. It was like me being recognized as Rob Schneider. There was a window of time where people got abducted by aliens. Well, that doesn't seem to happen as much, but I'm fascinated by that. And UFOs and stuff like that, and Bigfoot, the Loch Ness monster, all this kind of stuff. But ghosts are really interesting to me too. What's yeah. the stuff that you believe the most? Ghost? Probably or? the ghost stuff the most, which is actually in some ways kind of the wackiest. I don't know. It's like, but yeah, probably the ghost stuff. Only because I've actually had weird experiences like that. I haven't seen a UFO and I haven't seen Bigfoot. Uh, I want to uh, ask you about that. But what's interesting is when you talk to people, because we have Irish relatives in our family. Mm-hmm. They're not even saying it's a crazy thing. Uh, they were right. just like, oh, we had a ghost on the house. We'd see it was yeah. a little girl in a dress and we'd, say, yeah. we'd wave hi to it. And everyone saw the same image and yeah. they weren't even frightened of it. It was just the right. ghost was there. And that's when you kind of go, well, maybe what? <laughs> yeah. So now, I think ahead. there's some places like in Japan, they're super like 99 percent of the population believes in ghosts. And so everybody just accepts that you have a ghost and people will like leave out snacks for the ghost and stuff like that to appease the ghost and stuff like that. Do the snacks so, ever get eaten like Santa's cookies? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't think so. But I don't think you're <laughs> thinking of E.T. Ghosts, or something. Yeah. But I, mean, you know, I have a question that's not not to bum you out. Please. But oh, here we go. Yeah, I, know. And, and wow. I can take this out later. Happen? We've never mm-hmm. taken anything out. I could take this out later. But they said there for a while that there was a theory, and you might have heard this, that some of these alien abductions were people that were had relatives visiting their room and they were dreaming it, and that's how it would come out when they would remember it, or that's what they were told or something. Have you sure, ever heard you mean that? that they would they would remember something that was happening? <laughs> just just relatives specifically. Well, like a little darker than that. 
you know, right. yes. in the rooms. Yes, I understand. I understand. And what so have you, have you ever heard something like that? Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay. And I, and that, that it's all a kind of, um, there's a word for it. There's Waking a dream for, state, but there's a more well, there's scientific that, word. But there's screen, there's a thing called, I think a screen memory, okay. which is, which is when you invent a memory to hide something yes. from yourself like that, like mm-hmm. what you're talking about, because you don't, you can't process that. So you think it's something else. So you and sort people of create, probably steer you to that. So it tones could be it down, that too. Possibly. Could be that too. But the thing you're talking about, Dana, is is called hypnagogic sleep, okay. which is sleep paralysis. Which I've is, had it. I, well, I've, I've, seen, I've had it too. Can we I've hear your your story? I've def, I've had it. I mean, I had one of the kind of ghost encounters was probably sleep paralysis, okay. which is when I, I woke up in a place in a hotel that was very haunted in Dallas. It's supposed to be one of the most haunted places in the country, and uh, and I couldn't couldn't really move, but I was hearing sounds knocking on the knocking in the walls and all kinds of stuff like that. But then what I felt was there was someone in the room with me. And then I felt like someone got in a bed with Housekeeping? me. Housekeeping? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> and then someone put their arms around me and Whoa. I could feel somebody squeezing me. And then I thought I heard somebody say, don't move like that. But then eventually I moved and woke up and it all disappeared. And a lot of that stuff is characteristic, they say, of sleep paralysis. The feeling of pressure on your chest that you can't move, the feeling wow. that there's somebody in the room with you. And it's all brain chemistry. It's going to all be it's very real, as, though. It feels very real. But right? It's super real. It feels totally real. I and, had a double whammy, but so, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. No, no, no. Well, I, I, I was in a hotel with my wife, San Isidro Ranch. And then I had the thing where I'm about to wake up and something is... Yeah. Or I think I'm awake, but I'm, I, you know, and it's pressure on me. And yeah. The word nightmare comes from is a feeling that's right. of a horse laying on you. Right. So then I woke up and said, okay, that's a waking dream state, or I must have been in between, you know. So I go, use the bathroom. So I go back to, to bed and I'm, I'm, I'm a little shooken up from it. So I'm completely wide awake at that point. I processed it. I woke up and then it came again, except yeah. with more force. Yeah. So I woke my wife up. And I said, we got to (laughs) leave. And we did. And there was a lightning storm outside and and a dead skunk on the freeway was kind of a way. The whole whole thing was a fucking nightmare. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, but that's a, that's a big feature of it is the, is the pressure on your chest thing. And it's like, why it does that? I don't know. You know, but, but certainly that's a thing that a lot of people say the alien abduction thing could be uh, sleep paralysis. Well, what about white noise? What about white noise? You mean like... What is it? I, you mean, I don't know. Well, what, well, I didn't know what white noise was, but then there was this uh, boom box in my son's room. He was yeah. he uh, got a little spooked about his room, so he moved in with his little brother. So uh-huh. the room was empty, but there's a boom box in there, and it's not uh-huh. on, but it's 2 a.m., and I hear it as if it's on between channels. Oh, really? <laughs> right. So like, uh-huh. I go, what the hell? Can anyone hear this? So I go in there, and by the time I get to the room, it stops. But all the oh, way wow. there, it was. Wow, I've never heard of that. I've never heard that kind of thing. But there is a there is a thing. Terrifying. Like, it's called like electronic voice phenomenon. I think EVP, which is mm. that people think that when you have it like sort of between stations, or if you find mm. the right frequency, you'll hear ghosts talking. People hey, man, pick up these up? voices. What's yeah, up? exactly. Or aliens and stuff like that. And so there's a whole thing with people study yeah. that stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. I've been at dinner parties and <laughs> play this game of as anyone I, I turn to someone. Have you ever had a supernatural experience um, besides meeting me? That's that's the joke. But everyone, <laughs> everyone <laughs> or an extraordinary experience. Besides, uh, but everyone yeah. has something. Oh, yeah. there was that one night. You know, that's why your podcast, Chin Wag, should be a smash. <laughs> I think it's we'll just Chin Wag, right? It, well, it sounds Chinwag. like a Chinese restaurant, but my yeah, point it is, it's, like, no, it's, it's not. <laughs> the name is the name might not be the greatest thing, but it's what we picked and they went with it and they liked it. Chin so Wag kind of instead of yeah, okay. I was like, I, it's all I we don't know clear. what else. Like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I think maybe it was all that. I have clear. a question for so. Dana. Dana, yeah. quickly. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> when you say, our guest. No, 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 I, I don't want to no, I want to hear more. From no, no, you. I want, what do you got? It's just what you just briefly ran over was 
Is the term nightmare meaning a mare laying on you? Yeah, a horse. Yeah, that's horse. where it came from. Yeah. I've never a, heard that. The night yeah. horse, the horse that kind of comes in and takes mm -hmm. you away. Sort yeah. Of. yeah, it feels like a heavy, you can't, it wants yeah. to hold you down and you can't push on it. The second time it was I love it. pushing harder. And then yeah. some people are spiritual, like the these are trapped souls and they're actually yeah. sort of disoriented themselves and they want right. to get take your life and your body over. So they're just trying to get trying in. to get into your body, and okay, there's no a, no way they were successful. I have a Paul one. <laughs> I have a Paul question, yeah. Dana. Don't, okay. don't get mad. This one's for Paul. Oh. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So I like when Paul talks. When I have my <laughs> uh, dreams that are scary, yeah. I will hear someone in my room say something to me, mm -hmm. and I wake up to look, and I realize it's so scary real. They'll say my name or something will talk and I'll get up and I, I must have just dreamed it yeah, and mm -hmm. it seemed real and it, yeah. And or something. No one, I don't know. Or I've had because that. again, that's the weird, you can hear things with sleep paralysis too. So I don't know. Maybe it's kind of that thing. I've I'm had that I'm just trying to get in the too. club with you guys, I think. No, no, no. It's Listen, that that's weird, super. But one of the other ghost common. things I had was hearing voices in a room yeah. where somebody had told me you can hear voices in this room. And I, and I used to, it was a, it was a relative of mine's house and i used to sleep in this bedroom just because i was like i want to i want to experience this and it never happened oh, and then purpose? finally it did one night it woke me up because i heard a voice and it woke me up then it wasn't going and i thought oh i was imagining it or something and then i would hear the voice it was two voices talking to each other i i had that on the road in um wisconsin dana i think i told you i did this gig and i was selling out all these shows it's no, that is even part of the story. <laughs> it <is. laughs> that's, good. that's good to know, though. That's very how, good. How big were the rooms you were no, selling? It was just, it how was many a couple tickets? Twenty eight hundred seaters and a lot of comps or hard tickets. But after the shows, when I was wiped out from doing encores, I go home. You're tired, and uh, everyone, you know, I'm walking through the lobby like, "There, you're so brilliant, blah blah blah. You're so famous, whatever, whatever, you know." <laughs> sure. and, um, so you're exhausted, but exhausted. Yeah, I'm tired. Supernatural, just yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've got carpal tunnel from signing. Right. Uh, Funkos. So anyway, Funkos. I go in yeah, and they go, and then Bobby got on the road with me, goes, you know, this house, this hotel's haunted. And I go, it's a pretty nice hotel. It's huge. And I said, oh no, don't tell me that. I, that, that scares me. And we're here for three nights. And then yeah. they have a company line. That's how haunted it is. They go, are you guys haunted? And the waitress goes, um, we serve spirits in the bar. And I go, shut oh. the fuck up. Are you guys haunted? <laughs> you not get the question? But they have, they're have. they not allowed to tell you. So oh, really? everyone oh. dodges it. And everyone's like, I mean, it's a, you know, people have said things, but it's not. I mean, we can't. Because it scares people. It a, yeah, it does. But I think it'd probably be a selling point, too, for some people. I mean, I, but probably not enough people. I, I was afraid say. of it, but now I'm more fascinated. Have you guys yeah. ever seen a ghost? Because I have. No, I've never seen one. And I don't know that I buy that. The whole like, Ooh, you know, the, the lady in Paul. green with the bloody head walking down the hall. I don't know that I, I, I don't know that I buy that. <laughs> yeah, I challenge that. I draw the line at that. I don't really this, know that I buy that. This 10-year-old girl in a night dress a few times, because it was the same house, 1912 it was built, would come through the wall and just walk down the center of the bed. You've seen that? White. Yes. And then you saw that? Here. Yes. <gasps> But I you saw I, the ten-year-old girl in yeah, white walking yeah, through the walking the, down, Hugh coming diarrhea. down the center of the bed, <laughs> and then I That's told my wife, "What are you doing?" You know, no I'm kidding. But I did, I did see that, and um, and this was a thing other people had seen. No, and it's all in that same house in that same area. No one's right. seen anything. I'm a bad ghost. <laughs> no, story. my friends, no. my friend said uh, I his don't wife have collaboration. <laughs> no, those are saw a ghost. It looked like a young waitress leaving the house right when she got home, and he's like, wow. "Oh my god, it's haunted." Did you you saw her too? <laughs> young pretty waitress. She just took off. Sure. Oh. Uh, we got to move, honey. This is terrifying. No, I love this. Are there <laughs> movies that terrified you, like The Exorcist or whatever, that are scary? Yeah, The Exorcist is scary. The Shining always scared me when I was a kid. Uh, yeah, yeah, The Shining was a scary one. The first movie I can ever remember seeing was a movie. I don't know if you guys have seen this movie, Carnival of Souls. Are you big movie buff, guys? Uh, well, I, I am, I would say, but I haven't seen Carnival of Souls. Oh, you I'd should see, you I, should check it out. It's a really, year? really, oh, it's got to be the early 60s, I think. Oh, Blood, oh, okay. Blood Farmers. Black and white. 
Uh, Blood Farmers is a good movie. Sickening. <laughs> that I watched up. Logan's Run last night, so that's where I'm. You know. Oh, did they remake that? Or were they talking about remaking Logan's Run? They might. Yeah, yeah. That was 19, mid-70s, I think. It was yeah, Farrah that's Fawcett? a great one. Farrah Fawcett. That's Farrah Fawcett. Was it. It, it was, was soft scary. Early it's, on. Doesn't like a thing oh, bloody and, and, and head. dying. Farrah Fawcett. Fawcett. Yeah. My, Michael a, York. Yeah, who, you, absolutely. You know, great but that actor. wasn't great scary, movie. was it? It wasn't supposed no, to be no, scary. No, no, that was just sci-fi. I mean, scary ones. I mean, The Shining, I think, is, you know. What about, like, The I, Conjuring? Are those, I, don't, I haven't seen one. Those modern ones are more horror shock. There's, there's Yeah, there's, and they're okay. Some Kubrick's was see, atmospheric. Go ahead. Yeah, gore. did you see this movie, Barbarian? Fuck no. That just came out, like, Recent? a year ago. No. Is it a yeah, real yeah. real horror film? No, yeah, chance. it's really good. It's okay. really good. Yeah, it's really good. I, a real scary, scary film. <laughs> I do you not? So you don't see them. You get really freaked out by them. I do. I don't like that those as much as I love smart science fiction. Like I love uh -huh. Alien, you know, yeah. obviously yeah. 2001. Yeah. I love smart science yeah. fiction. I do too. I like science fiction like that too. It's yeah, and stuff. it can be a little scary, but but still yes. fascinating. You Did know? just see a movie called Edge of, is it called Edge of Tomorrow with yes. Tom Cruise? Yeah, and that, yes. That was a good one. I've yeah, seen that it was twice. A really good one. The guy just kept repeating kept everything over and, and over going again. back in. Yeah, that was great. I, yeah. yeah, I liked At that. At this point, I'll see anything with Tom Cruise. I mean, he's won me well, over. Well, he'll jump out of a plane. He'll fly. I mean, he'll go to the moon. I love I mean, it. He's going to go into space, isn't he? I, I think he's so. going to no. go into space. I, I just have such a... Uh, Me uh, too. A more appreciation for him as he's gone on. Me too. Top Gun was brilliant. I mean, it was an amazing film. Saw it three times. Brilliant. The type of film that you can't not engage how do you not enjoy that and so yeah, at this point he's like the last movie star they say or whatever you want to call him he's got his own lane and now i'm just have such an appreciation for him. me too but i so, always liked him i always thought he was oh, I, a, a risky business which i read yeah. i read for risky business for which for for that part for that part yeah oh wow what a different when wow, did you find been, out when yeah, you and found I nailed, out when came I nailed out. the audition yeah, and how he passed me on the way in. I go to pass. really. I said, "Top that motherfucker!" No, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Did you at that no. point? He was a known guy because he'd no. done. Uh, he'd done the, he, he done the machine gun. Uh, the machine yeah, gunning out the window with, thing. With, with Sean it's Penn. beautiful. Yes, yes. Oh, it's so yeah. great. It's so taps. beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's fucking beautiful. <laughs> taps. Uh, taps, taps. That's no, a I, I read yeah. for it, but I don't. I don't think I got close to it. I I had a problem. Is uh, what would he call it? Bad actor. <laughs> it's syndrome. It's a, it's a bit of a problem. <laughs> it can, yeah, uh, not being able to come, act, it's trouble. Yeah. But yeah, be, there's, something, I, there's something you can do about that. You I, can certainly get over that. Eventually. I need a teacher, and we could do it over Zoom because I think you could teach me. <laughs> Paul I, is known I as a great actor. I tested for Amadeus. I tested for wow. Amadeus because I had a baby face and blonde hair. Yeah, you would have been great in that. I know. Tom Hulse was okay. Yeah, Didn't he, he win okay. the Oscar? <laughs> Did he? he was, I don't know. He was he, okay. my mom's favorite movie. great in that, though. No, That's a good know. movie. I saw that again not too long ago. That Which was one? Amadeus. Yes. That's Paul, um, right. do you go the, for mostly people in the 1700s? Yes, I strictly. I feel like only. you could play that's anyone my, in the 1700s. That's my bailiwick. Is people in the people in the 1700s? That's Here, my wheelhouse. Here's the ben thing: Franklin, just to bring John people, Hancock, bring that up. Old, yeah, he goes from Big Fat Liar, which was just huge for my kids, huge. where you're oh, good. Blue, the blue, the orange guy. I mean, just gigantic. Sure. And then he plays John Adams in a miniseries at HBO, <laughs> and wins like 20 awards. I don't know how I, many I, awards. Yeah, I, I don't know. If that was troubling for people that I was the blue guy and then I was John Adams, I don't know. It probably was troubling. I think it's people. called range. Isn't it? <laughs> okay, that would be a nice way of putting it. The good it. thing hey. about John Adams is no one <laughs> well, knows if Giamatti, you're playing. He could never play John Adams. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> Fuck okay, face. Yeah. There Watch. you go. Watch. There you say, go. are you playing him well? And you go, this is exactly how he was. <laughs> exactly. That was a good one because nobody knows what he's like. They Having to play Washington was much more... Probably, I mean, the guy was great. David Morse was great, and Ben Franklin, the people that everybody knows. But yeah, I didn't have to. I didn't have to live. I could just make it up. I mean, nobody really knows what he. Nobody knows much about him. But mm. tell me how you prepped for that, or when you got it, was like, oh, I'm playing John Adams. Was it? Was it a big get? Did Tom Cruise read for it? <laughs> I don't know. That would have been amazing. You should have read for it. You would have been great as something in that. Both of you would have been great as something. Thank in that. you. Well, if you, you ever direct Jeffrey anything, in. put us in there. <laughs> I will. If I do a 1700s thing, I'm definitely going to have. Hello. You guys well, it. let me uh, let me ask you a question. <laughs> let me ask you a question about technique because I, I always feel like comedians. 
are good when they're discovering it. If you look at Larry David, there's like, Larry David's like, okay, you'll do this. And Gary Shanley did that too. Uh, we'll say something like this, like that. And there's three cameras and then you just do the take and you kind of know your lines. You don't really uh -huh. have lines. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it seems like great actors, trained actors can do all the angles, repeat everything. But do you have a technique for yourself? Like I'm going to save it for the close up or whatever you do in the, the wide shot in the morning, you got to match it all day. I mean, it's, I suppose it's hard sometimes to do. Yeah, it is hard to do. But I mean, I guess sometimes I've gotten more into the, sometimes I save the energy if I'm tired or something like that, but I don't generally do anything all that different from thing to thing. I mean, I, I don't really do it, which may account for sometimes my extra hammy acting, but it's like, but I don't really think of it that way. No, I still kind of, cause I used to act on stage a lot. I still sort of think of it like I'm on stage, which is probably not the greatest way to act on film, but I sort of do, you know, I mean, it's like if I'm off camera, I'm still doing it. I mean, I like doing. You give it a hundred percent off camera. Don't yeah, you I don't, lie. I mean, because I, no, no, I do. I do. And I would like, never I mean, do off camera. For I give it forty five percent. You guys, do you guys not? You, you just Garth, leave? Garth <laughs> never. Hey, Garth never doesn't do, do fucking off camera. No, Have you no worked chance. with the guys who don't do off camera stuff? Yeah, just I know. I always do off camera. That seems amazing yeah, to just fun, walk to your I've around. had it where they have either. Yeah. I've had their stand in read. Yeah, I've had it too. I've had it where they. I don't even know if I'm allowed to complain. I just know it's it's a little disrespectful, but. Some people, whatever's going on or they're burned out, I go, I'll give it to them. I said, you can, yeah, sometimes okay. I go, you can get out of here. Some of them, you don't need much to do your side, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or, or whatever. I the mean, line I know is people just, who, yeah. who don't want to look at you when you're off camera. Some people who kind of prefer not really looking at something, they get distracted by something off camera when they're When I do camera. movies with Daniel Day-Lewis, we laugh yeah. about this. We, sure. yeah. we Danny yeah. and I talked about it too. You, you talked to Danny yeah. about that? <laughs> Yeah, DDL is usually saying stuff yeah. like uh, Paul for Giamatti. Just yeah. do, just he. You know what he says to me? Paul just for, say how to say it. Just tell right. me how to say it. Right. He just needs a line rating. He DDL. goes, "I'm not from getting you. it. I can tell from your face. So just tell me one, and I'll just yeah. say it, and we'll get out." What of am here. I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Totally. Well, what well, I want to ask you, Paul, because I I think you're yes. a great actor. So now we can dig into that a little bit. <laughs> okay. Like I asked Joe Pesci. I go, Joe Pesci. Mm. How do you? How do you know your the scene is great, or how do you, how do you do it? You go and he goes, yeah, yeah, fuck it, you just lock in, you yeah. lock in. That's what you yeah. do. So I wonder yeah. because if you're a smart person and you're over redundant thinker about life and absorbing and sensitive person, and then you got to focus into this thing where you're so loose. It seems to me great actors kind of aren't acting when they're in the pocket when they're I suppose so yeah yeah there's a great take and you realize there was no judgment the voice wasn't saying am yeah, i doing right, this yeah, right yeah, yeah you know what i mean and but but i always wonder is that actually the best take sometimes you know what i mean sometimes if you think it was or, or you felt like it was i wonder if it actually was you know yeah, i mean you, you can't really know in some ways i don't know somebody like him though i mean has he ever not been in this i mean has he ever not been in the, in the sweet spot all the time yeah. i mean that guy lives in the sweet spot it's like he doesn't you know what i mean it's like and somebody some guys like, I don't know, does he need to do a lot of preparation and shit? I mean, it's like, it's not that he's playing himself. It's just that he's, I mean, he just, it's constantly, co a guy like that, I see like Jeff Goldblum. I'm like, when did you like, when did you flip the switch and it just turned on Jeff, Jeff Goldblum? And it's just Jeff endlessly, Goldblum and everything. Yeah, it just endlessly flows out like of you. And it's endlessly, it's en yeah, it's endlessly interesting too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're always in the zone. And, and it's not like they're repeating themselves in some mm -hmm. way because they're no. always great. They're always, you know, and then DDL, DDL has to prepare for three years to become yeah. somebody completely different. You know, you know, he, I don't kind, know. Both he kind of lost me when he said, uh, which I love Daniel Lewis, but Sally Field goes, he was so into Lincoln. He would text me as Lincoln. I'm like, well, I don't know if that sort of ruins it a little <laughs> that bit. That doesn't really. Yeah, that doesn't. Ruin, add up. And yeah. he, he had a flip phone. He couldn't text. Uh, I have I have a bit of a competition. <laughs> Morse code I, have a was competition. You know, I think he was doing. I think he like like Brando would do it too or Nicolas Cage you'll do a, a, a subtle impression so I think Daniel Day-Lewis was doing ah. a John Houston was <laughs> was who he was doing throughout right. There Will Be Blood right not that uh -huh. I should win right. it's everyone else should lose I'm John yes. Houston cut yes. Daniel no you're not you're not John Houston <laughs> but I think I am John Houston I, I think I think that's a good I think that I think there's something I to that 
I think there is something to that. You find a funny voice. Mr. You find Mr. A, what do you want? Yeah, yeah, you I find mean, a funny voice that's endlessly interesting. Yeah, like. Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. I was doing this goofy movie with him. And he uh, goes, he goes, he was just thought acting shouldn't have to be real. It should be surreal if it wants to be. He goes, I agree in this, with that. In this I, next take, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do Daniel Day-Lewis and, <laughs> in, in the name of the really? father. And so he came in, he, he plopped to his knees and started crying. He was doing a scene from a different <laughs> movie, not telling the director, cut, brilliant, print. Brilliant, yeah. right, yeah, brilliant. Did he really do that? Or oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. That's amazing. What was the movie you did with Nicholas Cage? Uh, it's uh, not as big as Trapped uh, your movie. Paradise. Trapped in Paradise. <laughs> me, uh, ah. me, love it. Yeah, there was no script and no real direction. We wandered around in the snow for a few months and they put it Fantastic. together. Anyway, See, I, I did Mickey by, Rourke. I'm much more, <laughs> That's always a good choice. I did Mickey you Rourke did in the movie. Did you? I don't know what Dude. you're doing. Well, I don't know what you're doing, but you guys should stop doing it. Watch the movie. It didn't work. The studio <laughs> was mad. Anyway, back to you, Paul. What were you he's saying? A I think he's a great actor, Mickey Rourke, by the way. Oh, yeah. I think Mickey Rourke's a great actor. Do you great ever actor. do you ever watch uh, Body Heat? Uh, is he in Body Heat? Yeah, he comes in. I don't know. Oh, that's right. Doing. Yes, yes, yes. He's great in Body Heat. And he's great. Yeah. He's the music on and everything. That's yeah, a great he's great movie. in Body Heat. Yeah. yeah, he's a great actor. He's a great actor. That's William Hurt and uh, Kathleen William Turner, Hurt. maybe. Yep, that's yeah. right. William and Ted Danson. Ted Danson's in that movie quite a bit. Oh yeah, and he and he's dancing in the movie. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. movie I'll watch a pretty you know every couple of years. Uh, I haven't seen that in a long time. I should watch it. Let me ask you a question because you've been in all these movies, all these great actors. So when mm. if you've been in a scene with someone, and then you just think to yourself, "Damn, they're good, like really good." Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. Mm. No, I, I did, did you do a, a movie with, with David? Uh I, I have yet to do <laughs> that. Yet, okay, believe me. Yet, it's gonna be it's gonna knock my socks off. <laughs> I, I know it will. I'm <laughs> saving gonna... it. You're not seeing it here. You'll see it. Okay. Very good. Yeah, all the time. I mean, that happens all the time. I Russell did Crow. I, Russell Crowe was like that. It's like crazy. And he's great. He's really great yeah. to work with. He's awesome. And um, yeah, he was like that. And Helen Mirren, I was like, how the fuck? Wow. Ooh. How the fuck are you doing any of this? It's amazing. And uh, all kinds of people. Yeah. But Russell Crowe actually was a good one. He was totally like that. How all the time. Cinderella, William Hurt. I worked with William oh, Hurt. Did he, William was Hurt? Okay. Yeah, he was amazing. Oh, he was stud. amazing. Yeah. What yeah, about amazing. you did Man on the Moon? How was Carrie on that? I love Jim Carrey. Was he... Because, you know, I heard stories about that movie, but it was, was it just, was it interesting? Have you guys ever done anything with somebody who's doing that sort of like, I'm in the character all the time thing? Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit. I think Sean Penn, it was uh -huh. a movie called Racing with the Moon, wanted to be referred <laughs> uh -huh. to as character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. My part right. was cut out of the movie, but I had a scene with Sean Penn <laughs> in a hospital. <laughs> yeah, I was a I was a crazy man. Yeah. Well, well, you were like another you were a lunatic in the hospital. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, it, Richard Benjamin called me at home and said, We love what you did, but we have to cut it out. He was so sweet to do that. So Oh, that's it. I worked with him. I did a movie. I did a, a Disney family TV movie. With really? that he directed, where I played a wacky Civil War ghost. It was great. <laughs> it was one of my favorite things I've ever done. It was so oh, much really? fun. Yeah, yeah it was a long time ago. He was great. Oh, he yeah. Really Dickie Benjamin yeah. is the best. I was blown away to be working with Dickie Benjamin. I was like, that, <laughs> that's really, that's amazing. What, what, wait a minute. What'd you what ask you me? Man wondered, on the Moon. Man on the Moon. Oh, it was... Um, yeah, it was it was it was it was challenging. It was uh, it was not it was not easy. You know, he was great, but it was tricky. You know, because it was sometimes hard to just kind of fit yourself around what he was doing, you know, it, being in the thing all the time. And it was it was tricky. It was amazing. And and it, they made a documentary because he filmed all this stuff off camera. Mm -hmm. And it was like what was going on off camera was almost was more insane than the actual movie. And and I think the, the idea was to make some kind of movie out of that, which eventually he made this documentary about it. But it was like so it's you know, Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman, who's playing Tony Clifton? Tony Clifton. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, so he was home whenever he was Tony Clifton, it was particularly mayhem off mm -hmm. the set because he was just fucking, you know, he would. He would so you it. yell cut and he's still in character. And the character <laughs> yeah. of Tony Clifton is loud, just, obnoxious. Well, and aggressive. fucking asshole who's yeah. Just, yeah, just, just lunatic. Yeah. What's your and fucking so, problem? So he was browbeating. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. 
Yeah, browbeating everybody. And he was mm-hmm. walking around with fucking stinky cheese in his pockets and he was smearing stinky cheese on people when he'd <laughs> hug you. He'd be like, you know, give me a hug. Give me, give me a hug. And he would like, you know, he's stinking. And who and pushed back shit. the hardest? Who said, get the fuck off me? Who put- I don't know that anybody did. That was the thing is that it was so such a fucking weird assault that I think people just you were so uh-huh. kind of stunned there in the headlights that you, you couldn't really tell them yeah. to fuck off. We're just like, OK, OK, I'll give you a hug. Nobody really told him to fuck off because it was just sort of, you know, it just occupied the whole fucking room. Wow. Whatever he was doing it, especially that character. And then sometimes he's Andy Kaufman, who, if people don't know, is just sort of quiet, more demure, right? Yeah, that was a more manageable Shut thing. Yeah. Did that? Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, it was it was fun. It was challenging, you know. But it was uh, got talked was about. Yeah, for yeah. sure, it did. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes you'd wonder, like guys do that, and is it just building a kind of mystique around what you're doing? Is it like does it make you more mysterious and more interesting sometimes yeah. if you do that? I don't. Know. Yeah, oh, does it but feel it works the, for them? Yeah. I remember Rob Williams telling me that the real um, Andy Kaufman at, at a given point would wear his wrestling outfit. You could tell he was wearing it underneath his clothes. Right. Just, just hanging out, walking around. Just going, hanging out. In yeah. It. Yeah. I don't know. He's, he was amazing. The stuff he did was really amazing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Really a- brilliant. A- anti-comedy. Uh, you yeah. Know, worked on a lot of crazy levels. Yeah. And I remember yeah. thinking, realizing, watching so much of that stuff with him. And I was like, he does the shit that you do alone in your room that you would never do in front of anybody else. He does that in front of other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the mighty, the mighty mouse mighty thing mouse. and shit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, or just like, I'm just going to read fucking oh, yeah. great Gatsby endlessly. And it's like the thing you just aren't going to do. He just would do, you know, it was like the thing that's going to not work. That's yeah. going to bomb or not. It's be a, funny. It's the he word just, performance art in a way more than comedy when you're kind of, know. you know, I would say that because you're not eliciting big laughs all the time you're getting no. people that are like really love it really love it and then the yeah. people that don't go i'm waiting for the payoff and it's not there yeah. sometimes yeah i did I a I did the, sorry go ahead no 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 go ahead no no oh, no, I just no. A, to i did a uh a showtime special i was really bad it was in the early 80s i got a two minute spot on it it was just a and andy was on there and i was outside and I, they go so oh, andy's still on he'd brought a wa- washer and dryer on the stage and he just did his laundry. laundry. He did his laundry. Oh, he's I said, when do we go for the good nights? He goes, he's on the dry cycle. He's he's got seven more minutes. I go, what's amazing. Yeah. And nobody really does anything like that anymore. I mean, the kind of nobody does stuff like that. That's calculated. I mean, if somebody does something like that, it's going to be more. The jokes they're telling are going to be. So off color. Even Norm McDonald, who who is a little off. Yeah. Off brand. Yeah. uh, Is. There's payoffs and there's this and that, yeah. or it's it's a put on, but it's yeah. not like that wrestling thing where you're waiting. Yeah, no, he hurts for the payoff. This is not funny. Yeah, I mean yeah, it's yeah. genuinely not funny. Yeah. It's like and but which is just amazing. And you think but there's going to be a big thing at the end where you go, oh, he did all this because blank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, right, exactly, really nothing. Yeah. I do think he really got off on the the theatrical idea that he's insulting the audience you know they're in they're in the south they're they're yeah. at a big with the ring yeah. and go you guys are bunch of hey see yeah. idiot and they go yeah. boo they take him so seriously yeah, yeah. I think yeah. somehow i must have enjoyed that part of no him. definitely there was some kind of really aggressive element to it i guess i guess what's his name you know uh borat, borat the, did that, that guy of, you yeah. know he does that kind of thing too sasha yeah hey, i don't understand I i'd say he's have... probably closer to that yeah, yeah you're right yeah you're right because yeah, he did definitely... that down there and he'd fight and he got naked or something and... yeah yeah, yeah but... i don't like it i i'm not my wheelhouse to 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 come from cruelty to you know? too aggressive to like kind of aggressive and well you get in these bad these position. these frat boys in a camper and you the, they're drinking and you sort of humiliate them and yeah. it affects their life you know stuff yeah. like that but uh i have an offshoot have, question yes yeah and then, and then we'll talk about sideways as per your no, deal no, no, but, that, it, but that's interesting per. the humiliation thing is interesting to me but, but I, I want to talk about that too just because i think that's interesting because i don't no, like it let's either. talk about it but yeah. i also feel like yeah. a lot of comics i i, I don't go see a sorry i do want to i do want to hear what your no, question we'll go, we'll go to sideways but i want to hear the yeah, yeah but i i was like i just i also don't love 
I, I'm not a stand-up guy and I've never done it. And I never would have the balls to do it. And I don't even go see it that much, but I went not too long ago to watch a bunch of people do it. And so much of the humor was just self-humiliation. It was too much self-humiliation. It was all just like, I'm disgusting. Nobody wants to fuck me. Nobody wants to. And I just kind of <laughs> yes. actually didn't find it funny after a while. Is that my a show? lot of it was That's... just this really kind of like relentlessly like self whipping kind of humor. A lot of it was like that. Yeah, social media begat kind of exposing everything. And then yeah. the idea, the comedian's up there and like, uh, you know, I was masturbating in front of my cat today. He's got right. his elbow yeah. on the mic stand, you know, and <laughs> yeah. and and, and self-flagellation and yeah. self-criticism and honesty. And I'm so depressed and I have so much anxiety yeah. and I can't get laid. Yeah. 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 Which to a certain extent is fine. But then when it's just the whole thing and it was like one person after another like this. And I just, but you know, like, part hey. of it, Paul, might be that there is there is sort of wave of that and there's a wave of less targets out there because of cancellation aha uh -huh. uh -huh. so so they become the target <laughs> that's interesting i've even okay. made fun of myself but i always have just a little bit now yeah, I don't you do to but it doesn't feel it. like the same thing it, it doesn't yeah. feel the same no but I go it doesn't because stuff, it's funny every stop time in, but i don't make it my whole theme of like i'm the biggest fucking loser in the world and yeah i, I have a lot of problems i take a lot of pills like i get i get kind of what you're saying but I know that targets are going away and people say, oh, they shouldn't. And you could do whatever you want, but you really can't. You can do some of it. And you, yeah. if you have a, if you have a bit, it has to be so bulletproof from every angle where you can't get yeah. in trouble for it. If it's, yeah. if it's a risky bit, uh -huh. you know, if it's race, if it's this, if that, you better be careful because you're going to get somebody mad. And they, yeah. if they get mad and they make a stink about it, yeah, then you're you suddenly backpedaling and you're like, it's just comedy, but that doesn't always get you out of it. Yeah. My yeah, goal maybe would be similar if you ended to stand up, Paul, was that, and I'll go back to this all the time because being in the Volkswagen bug, maybe your friends are a little stoned and I'm doing <laughs> an impression of the water polo coach and I'm doing it redundantly and exaggerating, winding it, winding it, winding it, <laughs> and they're helpless. So that still is where my yes. favorite place to get with an audience is I'm yes. going to do Fauci for 10 minutes and I'm going to go <laughs> yes. further and further. Yes. We gave you the boosters, but they didn't work, you know, I, <laughs> so that the, the rhythm of the language, the silliness of the exaggeration yes. becomes yes. this this stew of laughter. Yeah. So that's yes. always the goal for me. Yes. Um, so I don't have to worry about cancel culture. But I do love that. I, love, some, but I, I yeah. love something you do, which is just the little, the little like one line, one gesture impersonation is really funny. The sort of like, oh, yeah. the, like Michael Caine with his, with oh. his coloring book oh, or whatever. Right. I can't. Oh my <laughs> God. You know about that? Well, that was yeah. just out of boredom. I thought I'll do um, micro impressions. Like I would do the great Sean Connery. I go, this is, Great, late, great Sean Connery gets back as asked whether he enjoyed his vacation in Spain. Right. Okay. Yes. That's it. See, That's that it. just endlessly, that does it for me. Christopher Actually, Walken sees an helped. amazing magic trick. Wow. <laughs> See, that does it for me. That's good okay. for me. And then Mike, <laughs> Michael Caine in kindergarten. I like to eat paste. I don't know why. But I like to eat things in a classroom. So I don't know what you call it, but <laughs> in the, the classroom, the, the text <laughs> is one thing, but then the musicality of the rhythm, yes, yeah, to to it's distill funny. them to just yeah. one sound is fun it for sets me. Up something in your brain and in the, in, the, in the listener's brain that you yeah, can't stop there's some that. sort of thing that the fact that you heard that bit. Uh, anyway, let's go oh, to no, sideways. It's very funny to me. Sideways is a movie okay. that I visit regularly. My wife and I saw it within the last year. And we think it's um, just a very special movie, like uh, oh, like like a uh, your character in that is so <laughs> uh, I don't know it's so re it's heartbreaking and hysterical yeah. <laughs> and your your co star uh, hey Tom Church Tom, 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 Tom yeah, Church Thomas Hayden Church yeah Tom Hayden Church. Church you guys were so great together There's he's really a, funny that's he's a, a really rare, funny guy I think the people two of know you. guys like that and I do know a guy like that. And you were put in this weird position of being with him and you're also depressed and he's living the high life and he's about to be married and he's doing all the shit you wouldn't do. <laughs> right. And right. And I love my carefree friends that have no worries of, or any conscience about anything. Yeah. And it makes me feel like a stiff because you, yeah. you sort of think a little more straight, not totally, but you go, really? Like you're totally cool with all this shit you're doing? Yes. Well, but that's the thing that I think is kind of interesting about that movie is that in a way though, 
he's almost more fucked up than the guy I play. And in a yeah. way, he's almost in the darker, more fucked up place. Sure. Yeah. And then even the guy I'm playing, which I always think is interesting in that movie, that you really kind of suddenly see this moment. He's of going, brighter about it, but he's covering it because it's yeah, like so like, hey, we're having a great time. Yeah, Why and, can't you be and he's going to go get married and live in that house with the father who's going to be an asshole yeah. and go yeah. and just kind of cut himself up. And, and like, it's kind of depressing. And actually, my guy in the end. He's got possibilities in his life and stuff. So it's interesting he's the way it more, switches. He's more real. Bit. Yeah. The desperate to have, we're going to have so much fun. Like for people who haven't yeah. seen it, go see it. It's two guys go, go to the, the wine country. And one guy is shy and, and is brokenhearted and his friends trying to get him laid. And, and yeah, your yeah. scenes of the woman that you like are so funny and heartbreaking. Of yeah. Trying she to was break. The, yeah. Who was the uh, actress? I'm glad you like it. Uh, yeah. Virginia, uh, Madsen? Um, Virginia Madsen. Yes. Yeah. You're, you were. Oh, that was such a great pairing. And, She's great you know, in it. Everybody. Yeah, the script was really great. It's one of those the things. The gentleman where, who did know. that also did Descendants, right? So this he is did. A, he did the Descendants. He did Election. He, he did uh, Nebraska. Um, about Schmidt, he did oh, uh, Alexander it, Payne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he's yeah. he's brilliant because Descendants is another brilliant film. It's a think. great movie. I actually oh. think that's his best movie. <clears throat> I really like it. Well, I've seen that at least five times. It's I think George Clooney at the end saying goodbye is one, to his wife is one of the best pieces of acting I've ever seen. I agree. I really. think he's really I great mean, in that really, movie. Yeah. yeah. I did another movie with that guy that comes out in the fall with Alexander Payne, a movie oh, you called. Did. Uh, the holdovers that comes out in the fall. Yeah. And uh, what's it? What's the what, it's one about line? a kid log who gets line. um. it's about what's that log line, please log line. I'm trying to think <laughs> it's about a kid <laughs> at, a, at a prep school at a boarding school in the 70s. Yeah. And he gets for Christmas vacation. He has to he, he gets he's the only kid who doesn't have anywhere to go. A Christmas vacation. He has to stay at the school because okay. his parents yeah. neglect him and Left don't him care. Okay. And so the only people at the school are the woman who runs the cafeteria and the guy that the, the um, faculty member who's been assigned to look after the kid, who's this fucking ass that nobody can stand. And that's the guy I. How play. old are you and playing so as this kid? It's about the kid. The kid is. Uh, oh, I thought you were playing like, the kid. 13. No, no, no. I'm, yeah, no, I'm no playing he's playing the. the oh, I'm playing the teacher, the history teacher who has to look after the kid. And that's what it's about. And it's a nice and are, movie. Are you passive aggressive toward him or overtly mean? Or no, is I'm it... aggressive towards him. I'm aggressive yeah. aggressive towards him. Yeah, he's kind of a passive aggressive kid. And I'm aggressive aggressive towards him. So do you just him. go the for the people. comedy or do you think like, why is this guy so damaged that he's just going to beat up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, I feel like the comedy's there kind of anyway, because this guy's yeah. such a fuck up and so bizarre. And there's a, I have a weird physical thing that's really bizarre. And so it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it. I mean, I don't, I don't, think I'm that funny. So it's like, I, I just, I just try to just play the thing as it's supposed to be. You know, it's like, that's the only way I feel I like think I those well-written funny. things, well-directed things, they know what they're doing. And you I just think that's why you make me laugh. Works. I mean, I don't yeah. laugh at comedies as much because I, I know how the rabbit gets out yeah, of the hat. It's very rare yeah. for me to get surprised. But when a dramatic actor, <laughs> I like out that of the hat. term. I do like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We see all, oh, they're doing that. But sometimes a movie will, will, hit you know like tropic thunder and stuff there's one where you're yeah. kind of like or the first hangover like you know uh, yeah. there's, there's 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 a bunch but most of the time I, I, I go to dramas and i'll laugh harder <laughs> at a drama how much did grown-ups to do domestic dana <laughs> well, <laughs> was it under or over 200 you know million what? let's look at a clip well, what it was was <laughs> um no well, uh, what was the foreign box uh, off what'd you do overseas did it Probably we did go overseas to do press and uh, one city, one country every night. Right. Yeah. Really? You've probably done that junket. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. tough, but, uh, do people you know, in particular countries really take to, to, to that? Well, to those movies I don't want to say others? I'm huge in Bulgaria, but I can't ah. step foot. <laughs> Adam has a big, uh, with Netflix, a huge reach. You no, know, he does because yeah. of, because yeah, of Netflix, so. it helps. And, but you know, those, I think if they finally went on, um, from TBS to Netflix, the Grown Ups movies, but it's just fun. I bring those up. I don't know why. We can talk about Police Academy Four, but I also have. Well, what, uh, what about Billions? Has Billions made Billions? That's my question. I think it did do well for the for the network. I think it did. Uh, yes. Is it possible <laughs> global well. syndication? It will. Oh sure, it'll, sure. It'll People up. love that all over the world. People love that show. Paul, in yeah. fairness, I watched Billions, the first one yesterday. Right. So uh -huh. I'm not caught up on all 900. <laughs> that, yeah, that's okay. I, at least I wanted to know what this 
bullshit is all about. No offense. Um, so I what? said, everyone's so so kidding. What the bullshit is all about? No, no, no. I hear <laughs> no, I'm you. Saying, you know, I'm saying I hear hey, only don't, good don't things. Don't criticize my Chuck Rhodes. No, I'm kidding. Hey, I'm nice. I only hear good things about <laughs> Billions. So I go, I haven't seen it. I knew Malin Ackerman a little bit in the old days. So I said, sure. let me just mm-hmm. see this. And very cool, very gripping. And your wife at the end stepping on you. I go, right. oh, I, I'm in on all these different angles. So I really did Good. love it. No bullshit. Good. And uh, it was just fun to see. And now I feel like I'm missing out because there's so much catching up. There's so much catching up. That's why I, can't, I have a hard time watching anything. Yeah. A series, even if you miss the beginning. One, knowing I'm going to have knowing I'm going to have to stick yeah. with something makes it hard for me to even start something if it's new. But then having to go back, a while, I just can't do it. I'm like, I just I'm like, there's too much. Somebody was I've never seen a lot of these. Like, I've never seen Breaking Bad. I've never seen. Um, oh. some of these. Other oh yeah, things. you Sopranos. miss it. I'd Sopranos? love to. I'd, yeah. I've never seen The Sopranos. I'd love to, but I'm like, mm-hmm. I can't. Fuck, it's just too too much. It's well, too it's much. A, it's a 90 hour movie basically. Yeah, hour like, movie. <laughs> yeah, so true. It's too much. People it's are like, much. you know, yesterday I had the day off. I did a uh, 14 seasons of uh, you know. Better yeah, call Saul. I, I go, what? Yeah, exactly. Is that 100 hours? Like, yeah, knocked it out. Yeah, I can't do that. I can't you got to see it. Ozarks, man. It's I got only a 75 hour movie. <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> it's too 70, long. That, there, but that, you know, the great thing is it's like a big bookstore. Billings is on the shelf. It's uh-huh. going to be available for human beings for a long, long yeah, time. Hopefully. It'll yeah, always yeah, yeah. be there. And, uh, <laughs> Well, it's another one. I don't want to fawn, but it's another one that your character is so, uh, I don't know, rich. It's an intense oh, guy, <laughs> damaged. Uh, yeah, He's so human, and his relationship, Mag- Maggie Siff and you have a, a beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah, she's great. Plays my wife. Yeah, Just she's this, great. Man. Yeah, and it was so weird yeah. how close she was to the Damian Lewis character. Yeah, that man, gets that's all weird. His, his, part his character's it. wife yeah, is it, really is into... Gross. It is really gross. Yeah. Just, no, it's like... Yeah, but it's everything's so watch. thought out because go you go to that, to that, to that, and while you're seeing it play out, the big house. Yeah, and it I gets mean, really as it goes along, David. It gets really like the plots get really elaborate, and it's all like double cross, triple cross, quadruple yeah. cross. It just gets really, really elaborate. So it, it turns into that kind of thing. Yeah, I didn't fun. know what that title. I just didn't know really exactly what it would be about. But the intricacies just sort of hooked me on stuff that uh, I liked. So I, I sort of got into it. <laughs> it wasn't. You know, some you watch and people fawn over them and you go, it just didn't click with me. I have that. Yeah. But oh, yeah. I kind of no, clicked into it one. and Good. thought, I'm shit, I like kind it. of am late. Okay. But well, the, the, I, the basic thing <laughs> that they're following is that, well, you came from money, your character, and he's a district attorney yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. And then it's really examining, is there this other game that billionaires are playing? Like, are they... I always feel like I, I have a little bit of stocks, but I know there's other people trading and selling or sure, entities absolutely. or BlackRock or yeah. whatever that are just playing a different game. We know that the yeah. AI has been. You just follow stuff. them. You're just like, they're like, and the, you're, the cat and you know. mouse game between yeah, the you cat and, and mouse your nemesis. thing is interesting. Yeah. And yeah. kind of who's worse and stuff like that. Is yeah. the billionaire worse than the politician? Is the politician worse? Yeah. And why do we, why do we worship these billionaires when really most of them are just assholes? Yeah. And it's like, right. you know, and, and, why isn't the politician a better person than he? You know, well, he I'll ask you a question: Which billionaire and which politician would you like to have lunch with? I just I I, I turned into Larry <laughs> oh King. Gosh. I turned into That's Larry really King. Interesting, David. Oh you could. God. I'll say yeah, Elon David, Musk. Well, be I would love Elon Musk him. for me because he's he does ketamine. He, he's so he has yeah. rocket ships and he's so. I would say to Elon Musk too because of the space stuff and the yeah. sort of like the kind of wackiness of that stuff. Yeah, probably politician. That's a really I I don't know. That's a tough one. It's scary. I don't want to know too much. I don't want to. Know I don't really want to. I don't know that I really want to spend a hell of. <laughs> I'll be stuffed. <laughs> yeah. Well, currently, Bobby Kennedy Jr., I know he's, uh, for a lot of people, he's kind of out there. But I, I find anyone who says, and you know, my my uncle, JFK, yeah. and my yeah. dad, I mean, Bobby Ken- So then I just want yeah. to hear, I just want to, and I also find him just very interesting because he's, he, He's eccentric. I, I would say I would say I might like to like overhear a, a meal he's having. I don't know if I want to have a meal with him, but I'd be definitely interested in hearing because it's Ash like it's, not. It's, it gets pretty exactly. It sounds it weird. Wacky. He's got to work on that when ET I voice. Returned, uh, Mary right, I, haven't, I haven't really heard him talk, but everybody says his voice oh, is really scratchy. Tough. He has uh, 
He has it's dystonia, which makes bad. his uh, rigidity on his vocal cords. He has a very, very tight voice, but you get it's used got to that it. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is that, but that's, is that yeah. like a psychosomatic thing? Is that like a, is that like a I psychological think dystonia thing? Dystonia is a real, I have a brother who has it, just that he has no uh, control over his grip in one hand. Interesting. And did he overstrain it or something? And then it happens? Or like, how's that happen? Because I, I knew think a guy a, who had it. I think it's a brain, it starts in the brain, but I'm not sure oh, okay. if it's, if it, there's a, a symbiotic a relationship nerve thing? between, uh, or some reason you'd be predisposed, you know, uh -huh. I, I know uh -huh. a lot about science and medicine. So <laughs> yeah. uh, if you have any questions, no, I'm good, with, I'm good with corner. Absolutely. I'm good with you should get on stuff. TikTok. You know. <laughs> okay. <very good. laughs> Wait, I have a question. I know, I know we got to let this guy go. Uh, I don't uh, ever, I don't ever do want this. You'll this be sad interview. at the end of your yeah. podcast. I'm, I'm <laughs> loving Paul. Can we hang out? Do you live in New York? This is, I do live in New York. All yes. Right. I live in Brooklyn. Yeah. You all live right. in New York? No, but I go there all the time, and I, okay, I know where good. Times Square is. But yeah, you're Very so good. much. We can uh, meet. We can meet in Times Square then. <laughs> we can meet at the Bennigans in idea. Times Square. Uh, <laughs> your mm -hmm. father. I, I have this question, Dana. Here we go. Because interestingly enough, when he was, I'm not reading this. Yes, I am. When when he was mm -hmm. commissioner, he is the one that mm -hmm. banned Pete Rose, mm -hmm. right? From yeah. betting. How interesting that he was there for six months. I don't was even it? know if he was there for that long. I mean, I think it was really brief. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And now these days when gambling is so much a part of it, it's hard to stop it. It's like a right? damn break. I mean, it's like now it's Athletes just like, are getting, I know. getting caught for gambling, but they're sponsored by DraftKings. Is that true? Is that, that I don't even know. I mean, yeah. is that true? Now it's like gambling. Wow. They're like partners with NFL and stuff, but you're not allowed crazy. to get, it's just so it's getting very muddy, super muddy, super crazy. I didn't, and I know like, Pete Rose is grinding his teeth. Yeah, but, probably. Oh yeah. Cause Pete Rose, that whole thing. Cause my, my grandma's from Cincinnati. So is my mom. Oh really? So they were in love with him. Sure. I well, the idea where you would bet on the game whatever. and then you would perform in a way to win money. That was the problem, right? I you guess would so. bunt I mean, instead of going for a single or something. If you, you bet on your own game, it's a every time. I'm just going to If you bunt. bet on your own yeah, game, you is different than betting on other games. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I guess it yeah. goes back to the sort of scandal, the, the reason Red, it's so, Boston, Red, White Sox. The, 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 the White yeah. Sox, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. And it was they, they were paid by mobsters to throw the game. I, I mean, yeah. it was like, yeah. So I guess that's why it's partic was particularly like the do worst you, thing. Does any part of you miss mobsters in a way? Just something about a mobster. Hey. That there are mobsters, mobsters anymore. I think they're mobsters, but they're they're well dressed and yeah, they're, they're yeah. at five stars. Yeah, I guess so. They're all like, yeah, they're, you know, I, they're I do all around. I, you. I do a little bit. I do a little bit. I kind of do miss that. Have you world played a mobster? Guys. I'm not really, not really, no. And it's funny because I am Italian American. Oh yeah. And when Jumati. I first when I first got to New York, they would send me out. On things, just because you know, you get you 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 you, make, you get to New York and you get an agent, sure. and they're like, "You're Italian." We'll just send they send you on anything. This is yeah. what you'd be good at. Yeah. So yeah. I was constantly getting sent out for these things where I'd go in the waiting room, and it was all these like three hundred pound fucking Goombas, guys from Goombas. Staten Island. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, were all the guys who were it. on Sopranos yeah. eventually. It was all these guys. And they're all, they're all just sitting around and they're all just like, <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like kind of sitting there just like, just out of the I'm Yale from School Italy. of Drama. I'm like, yes, I'm from the Yale School of Drama. <laughs> and they're all just, and I'm like, I'm never going to get these fucking parts. Yeah. Have, have you played that? But, Do they have you? Go ahead. But I, but I, I want it. And I would go in on <laughs> things sometimes. I remember going in on a thing and it was for like a cop or something. And, and the, the woman kept saying to me, can you make it more Italian? Can you be more Italian? And I was like, I am Italian. What? And so I would keep doing it. And then I realized what she wanted was she wanted me to be like, oh. she had all that kind of stuff. And so I did that, but I so still let me, let me, hear it. let me hear it. You mean like a New York yeah. Italian guy, like that guy. Yeah, what well, I kind of like you want me to you, you know you want you want us to whack him you want me to whack him for you Tony kind of shit all that can, sort of stuff. But I'm can not you talk get like that, that guy some more? Because I, I love that guy. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. <laughs> hey guy, hey rough boy. All, all, kind of, all, all those all those kind of guys like this. I love that shit, but I'm not gonna do that. Hey, want to go? You could, I could play maybe very intimidating now play though. an older. I could maybe now play kind of the older guy who's sort of sitting around playing dominoes. You know, he's got like the card table on the yeah. street. Who's playing Everyone that fears kind of guy. him. Yeah. He's like kind of the Don in retirement <laughs> yeah. kind of guy. Yeah. Like, the older ah, yeah. guy. Well, like maybe I could play. Yeah, that guy is kind of like my sausage and peppers. Where's my sausage and peppers? It's a little yeah. bit yeah. of Regis yeah. Philbin creeping in there. Just a little, where's my <laughs> sausage <laughs> and pepper? I need it over here. You know, honest to God, it's the best sausage and pepper I ever had. Tom broke on it. He would have been. 
He would have been brilliant brilliant. as a kind of Irish Here's the Italian. If you ever do one again, you add the you add the no at the end because I had a friend who go, hey, he go, Uh hey, this is good pasta, no. (laughs) Rather than (laughs) that's good. good. That's a good trick. I knew a guy. I knew a guy who would always say you'd ask him something, and you'd say like, hey, that's a really great car. He'd go, watch this. I got that car. He'd say, watch this before he said anything. Yeah. He would say, he would always say, watch this. He'd go like, you'd say like, oh, this is, this pizza is so good. He'd go, watch this. This is the best pizza I've ever had. (laughs) He'd say, watch this. Every fucking time he'd say, watch this. I I know a guy, when instead it says, a guy says, or he says, he goes, he stands here. He he stands here. What are you doing over there? And I oh, said, yeah. he, he stands, stands here. He says, "What the yeah, fuck is going on?" He stands here. What right. the fuck's yeah. going on? I go, right. "I don't know what's going the on." The guy comes up. He stands yeah. here. He says, "Where's yeah, my it. yeah? Where's my he shoes?" He stands here. Where's my fucking <laughs> shoes? Yeah, yeah that kind yeah, of thing. All those. I did I see a, an Italian movie the other day, and it was like a low rent one. And I was like, I think I'm finally <laughs> tired of like the beaten down Italian wife and the guy and the wife beater I'm coming in going, tired. Hey Frankie, how would you do in school? I'm like, is it the same <laughs> shit over and over? I'm tired. Again? I'm with you. I'm kind of tired of it. It's I'm tired of the kind of like, what is shot? All the like, shut I'm up. just kind of You want of some of this? You of want it, some of this? Yeah, hey, yeah, totally. Your baby's crying. Hey Paul, <laughs> would you ever like to do uh, prosthetics <laughs> and an accent? I I've done prosthetics. Which, which movie? I really I like which, it. Did you, I did the plan. I did a Planet of the Apes movie where I was almost totally covered in in prosthetics, and I was an orangutan. orangutan. I didn't want to, I didn't orangutan. Want to offend. They made you a fucking orangutan. <laughs> I probably no, saw it. I was it. pissed off because I wanted to be a gorilla, yeah. and 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 I was going to be an albino gorilla, and then they they ditched that idea. I was going to pink eyes, and I was going to be Ooh. an albino gorilla. And then they dished that idea because it was too expensive. This to a, do the this whole a, thing. It's so a good orangutan. Me an suit, orangutan. No? This is a good orangutan. Yeah, I, I got pink eye for free at a strip club. Yeah, you were an orangutan, you know, but you didn't get nominated that's for that. But so I did that. And actually, in 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 Man on the Moon, I did Tony oh, yeah. Clifton briefly and one part of it. But I've done it in other things too. I wore a lot of them in John. But Adams Gary and, Oldman and Churchill. What about you? That would be great. But he was completely almost yeah completely almost covered com- in that. So that's John tough. Adams had prosthetics on. What what did as it got older. As the old age, age. Okay. Yeah, it got older. Yeah. And I think I've done it in other things. I can't remember now, but I've done it. Yeah. I do like it. I really like it. I really like doing it. Hey, watch this. He really likes doing it. Yeah, watch this. Watch, watch this. this. She likes to wear. Watch this. She's got <laughs> this a funny rubber nose on. Now you got he Trump coming in. You're wearing, hey, watch this. You're wearing a, yeah, he's, got, he's standing there with Trump a fucking in. nose on. <laughs> right. Yeah. I love it. I yeah, would love yeah. to do something. It'll never happen. I don't think that I'll I, ever play. Yeah. I'd love to do prosthetics and just be invisible and then, and then just get ready for my Oscar. Right, just, right. Hey, you, oh, if you just right put away. a nose on, you're halfway there. Or you know, but if that you have can a, actually just a nose can really make you look different. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like the nose. N- Nicole Kidman for um, right. That's uh, Virginia Simpson. Wolf. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. How I know movies. You didn't think that I know movies. <laughs> you didn't think I know movies. I'm bringing up from Nicole fucking Kidman over here. here. Watch this, <laughs> Virginia <laughs> Wolf. Watch how, this. How the Virginia podcast go? You know, it was great. You know, he stands here. You know, Paul G. Man, he stands here. He goes, oh, you know. he stands here. He stands That's here. It made no one. sense. What about not for nothing? That drives me crazy. Not for nothing's a good one, too. Not for, yeah, nothing. not for nothing's nothing. a good one. Yeah. Not yeah. All right. Let's let Paul go. He's been Thanks, guys. Uh, being very good Paul, to us. Uh, J- uh, Chin Wag. Yes, sir. Chin Chin Wag. It's a new podcast. It's been out a couple months. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Chin yes. Wag. That's a good show, no? Yes, it yes, is. Yeah. It's all about yeah, supernatural this. ghosts. I'll just do this. It's so much. You, you have this, I think, 30 coins coming out on HBO Max. Oh, yeah. That's on uh, HBO Max. And yeah. you play um, eccentric, kooky, crazy. Billionaire. I play a crazy billion. cult leader Ooh. billionaire. Yeah. So all your parts leader. now have a billionaire in yeah, it. Probably. Either you yes. or them. You know. Yes. And now yes. you've got Kerry Stoll. He's your new kind of billionaire. Yep. You know. Yep. My so rival. 30 coins on HBO Max. He's got right. the podcast. Chin Wag, and of course, the movie billionaires. The when does movie Billions the is on in August? I think August, the, la- okay. the last season. And then the right, school that's right. holdover. This movie, the holdovers, is holdover. in the fall. Holdover. It's like okay. Thanksgiving or something. Let like me that. tell you I'm something. Sure. You, you got more yeah. pots than a fucking not auto for factory. Not for nothing. The film is going to show. You, you the got fall. more rolls in a bakery. Sausage you got peppers. <laughs> right, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Anyway, all right. Ple- thanks, pleasure, Paul. Paul. Thanks, we guys. Over I really appreciate too much. it. We enjoyed it. It was awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Th- thank you. Bye. Said, bye. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. 
Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13, executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 